Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. Uh, WTF is Blood Sports TV. All right, well, it's brought to you by Fat Shark, the developers of Crater, and I use the Crater as a good example because this game is based on the art style and the characters of that title, and it wasn't a particularly successful game. It's mostly because it launched in a really buggy state, which is actually very unfortunate, because it had some really cool ideas behind it and some really awesome character design and aesthetic, but it was buggy as hell on launch, so a lot of people gave it a pass. So what exactly is Blood Sports TV? Well, as you probably noticed, it's got a lot of creep killing in it. So it is a PvE hero defense game. Some people might call it a PvE MOBA. You could call it that, if you like. Um, what I would say is that it is a hero defense, and there are various mods that do hero defense. But I think this is probably one of the first sort of commercial games that have attempted to do it. So what you've got is a set of eight characters divided into four classes. The Medicus, which is you know, kind of your medic support character. You have a sort of crowd control guy, which is what I'm playing right now as a variety of stuns and debuffs and so on and so forth. You also have the Slayer, who is like your DPS, and you have your tank, who's your big scary dude. And what you're able to do with these is kill all of the enemies coming in your general direction. And once you kill a wave, it launches a missile. Once the missile goes off, then you go on to the next wave after a short break in which you can, if you so desire, go and buy new items and also kill beasts to the side of the level for extra cash. Which is a, a pretty useful way of doing things. If you can run over here, for instance, there's a bunch of beasts in this pen. You go and kill those, you get a little bit of extra money. And they can sometimes be a little bit hard to kill. It's kind of like this game's version of a jungle, really. But they will get you a bunch of extra cash. So, frankly, it is very much worth doing. Outside of that, you have to defend the outposts. And each outpost you defend will give you a bonus at the end of each round. And every time you beat the round, it launch a missile, destroy the village of the people that tried to kill you, which is rather sadistic, regardless, even if they are a bunch of evil wasteland post-apocalyptic Swedish mutants, which they are, by the way. And you'll move on to the next round. And depending on the length of the round, you'll face either one, two, or three bosses, generally speaking. And... These bosses actually have quite a lot going for them in terms of the abilities they have. There are basic champion units, there are your basic little creeps, and then there are huge bosses which have a lot of hit, hit points and a bunch of different phases and abilities that they can actually use. Which, frankly, is quite enjoyable. I think that's actually the bit that stood out to me the most. It reminded me of doing boss fights in MMOs, like Five Man Dungeons because of the amount of abilities and the level of difficulty that the bosses actually presented. So, I rather enjoyed that, honestly. But outside of that, it is killing waves and waves and waves of creeps for cash. So, I suppose the question is first, how does it play? Well, it's it plays like League of Legends for the most part. It uses smart cast, and it also uses skill shots. You can turn smart cast off if you like. So, if I actually go to the options menu here, I can just turn off smart cast, and you'll be able to see actually what I'm aiming. So, there's a couple of sort of fairly moba specific options. So, you can go for the aim and click. Or you could go with the smart cast if you happen to be confident that you can actually hit your target. So that's a that's a click-based ability. There are quite a few that sort of have an attack path. There are a bunch of AoE abilities. Put down a decoy here as well to put this guy off, and then I can power shot him if I so desire. And I also have my ultimate ability, which I can level up here as well. I'm gonna actually go for an AoE build here to rather than sort of single target. Hello, what do we have here? Let's put acid rain down on these guys and they'll melt pretty fast. It's pretty responsive, from what I can tell. I haven't noticed any particular bugs or lag there. Whenever you cast an ability, it goes off pretty damn quickly. I'm going to use my Hyper Discharge here to just wipe this complete group out. There we go. You'll notice in the missile cam there, there's actually a picture in picture. It'll actually show the shark missile launching, which is quite cute. As I said before, it does it does have a quite a cool aesthetic. And it is borrowed from Crater, so it's cool to see that world kind of being expanded with a different game. So I quite like that. I hope that it kind of turns into a franchise because I really do like the aesthetic of Crater and the art style. It's just the game was a bit lacking at launch. But outside of that, there's no PvP of any description. So you are working with a team and you're working without voice communication or the actual ability to issue any real commands, which is a bit of a problem. It would be nice to say, be able to issue commands more than just typing at your opponent. 
You do have the ability to ping on the map, but that really is about it. And I imagine at the higher difficulty levels, it would be nice to have voice comms. Obviously, if you're on with friends, you can do that, but there's no default voice comms available, and there aren't, like, a selection of emotes that you could put out which say, hey, help me, defend me here, and so on and so forth. And there's a variety of difficulty levels and maps available. So I imagine at the much, much harder difficulty levels, you're probably going to want to be on voice comms. In fact, this game actually reminds me quite a lot of Dawn of War 2 the last standalone which it was kind of a pve wave based game in which you had hero characters and i think that was one of the first commercial examples of the hero defense emergent genre on pc the idea that you can take something like dota which is really if you boil it down to its barest possible essentials a short form action rpg oh gonna go revive him because he just fell over and you get to play that over a short session. You get to level a character up over a short session, buy items, and become more powerful. And it's actually a pretty cool feeling for a lot of people. I think it's actually what some of the appeal of games like League of Legends really is. Because rather than playing, like, say, 20, 30 hours in Diablo to power up a character, you get to power up a character from being completely weak and someone which could die in a few hits to an absolute powerhouse in about 30 minutes or less. And... I think a lot of us find that appealing. And obviously, since I've played a lot of League of Legends, a lot of Dota, a lot of Smite, a lot of Awesome Noughts... Yeah, I obviously find that appealing as well. But some people like that idea, but they don't really enjoy the PvP aspect. Because, it's let's, let's be frank, it's, it's a very high-stress game a lot of the time. You can get a lot of hate. You can get a lot of unfortunate feedback, let's just say, from your teammates. That is entirely possible. And that can be unpleasant for a lot of people. So... What you have here is a PvE option where you're actually working together against increasingly hard waves of creeps as opposed to having to deal... Oh, I'm gonna die! Get it off me! No! Hopefully we have a Medicus here. I think we do. Someone can come and revive me in a second. There we go. He's gonna, the Medicus is gonna come and help me. Cool. Thank you. And it's still a kind of compelling, like, mini action RPG experience. It's just, you take the PvP aspect out of it, and you take away a lot of the stress. But it's still a fairly tricky game, at least at the higher difficulty levels. Because there are a wide variety of different enemy types, and the boss characters have all sorts of different moves you've got to watch out for. And at that point, you've got to really use the synergy of the different classes. You've got to use the crowd control guy, you've got to use the tank effectively, you've got to use your medicus effectively. And so far... While I am certainly more of a fan of the PvP style of this kind of game, I haven't hated my time with it so far. I haven't exactly enjoyed it immensely, and I think that's mostly due to the fact that I personally don't really enjoy a lot of horde mode games that much. I know loads of people love things like Nazi Zombies, they love the Zombies mode in Call of Duty, and they really like just fighting wave after wave of enemies. I am not the sort of person that enjoys that, personally. But, that doesn't mean that it's an invalid game type by any stretch of the imagination. Lots of people do like that type of game. And it was very popular in things like Warcraft 3 and to a lesser extent Starcraft 2 for a reason. Those kind of hero defense mods that they developed. Because people do like having that mini action RPG experience, but they don't necessarily want the stressful PvP experience of something like Dota or League of Legends. So... While some people might turn their nose up at this and say, well, what the hell is the market for it? I think there is a market for it, quite frankly. And I think that perhaps it, anyone who's saying that probably isn't the target demographic. And that's sort of the really important thing to bear in mind. If you're already into Dota and League of Legends, then you don't really need an easier version. You're probably not, unless you've got completely sick of interacting with people, which frankly I don't blame you for. You're probably not in a position where you're going to say to yourself, Man, if only I could just take that stressful PvP aspect out of League of Legends. You're probably not that guy. So you're not the guy that this game is targeted at. But if you're interested in the idea, say that little mini action RPG idea of Dota clones, and you don't want the stress of PvP, and you're actually after a more cooperative experience, then you might find that actually this is not too shabby. It does have a wide variety of map choices, which is good. I, I, I would have been somewhat upset if they only had one map for this, but they don't. They've actually got like more like eight or ten. 
So they have that, and they also have a lot of different leagues. Amateur League 1 through 3, and then all the way up to like a Poker League or something like that, which is the super hard difficulty level. And by unlocking these achievements here, you go through what's called, I think, the Path of Glory, which allows you to unlock passives for all of your characters. So your characters gradually get more and more powerful. It's a little bit like Killing Floor in that respect. You're not expected to go into the hardest difficulty level immediately. All right, we're going to change class over here. Let's go with, let's see, what have we got? So they've got two Slayers already and a tank. So I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going to go with Medicus here, actually. I actually like, really like playing Luna Stormare. She's got some, or he, I don't know which. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, it's a she. There you go. She's got some really fun abilities, like Rocket Surgery, for instance. It has a really cool way of healing, which is kind of a conal area of effect attack. But you can start off at the bottom in the amateur leagues and you can work all your way up to the pro league and the really difficult stuff, which requires like a crazy amount of coordination to work properly. So if you have a group of friends that are looking to play a bit of a co-op game, then you might actually find a little bit of enjoyment here. There are definitely areas to criticize that are not just based on the genre of the game, because I think you know, that's, that's your sort of subjective criticism right there is th what the genre of the game actually involves. And you're looking at it, you're probably saying to yourself, well, why don't I just play Dota? And, you know, if you're a Dota player, then of course you probably will just play Dota. But I think that that's very subjective. Some people are not going to enjoy the idea of a PvE hero defense game. And I'm not the world's biggest fan of it myself, frankly. But I try and detach myself from that whenever I do my critiques, because I know there are people that do enjoy these co-op horde mode games. But is there anything sort of objectively wrong with it? Well... It doesn't have a huge character variety, I do have to say that. And it seems like the lack of items do mean that there's sort of a lack of viable builds. Admittedly, I haven't played enough of it to really make an accurate comment on that. So it would be unfair to say, hey, yeah, there's not enough items. But I think only having two characters per class definitely has a lack of variety in total. When you look at something like Dota or LoL that have like 100 characters each, having only eight characters on a non-free-to-play game is maybe a bit of a difficult sell to some people. And you can build the characters in a couple of different ways. I mean, you can actually build the medic to be a very kind of rapid-fire damage single target class, or you can build towards AoE, you can build towards sort of tech power healing and all sorts of things like that. You can definitely do that. But simultaneously, with only a limited number of skills available, it's not like, say, here is the storm where you can pick like a couple of different ultimates and you can customize your abilities to do different things. You don't have that here. You, you do it through the item system, and there are various passives and actives available which do enhance the variety of things that you can do. But ultimately, each class is kind of going to do the thing which is in the, within their role and their rule set. Which is fair, you know, you expect that, but... I'm a little worried that people might get bored with only eight characters. I I'm surprised they didn't launch with more, considering the idea that they have no PvP in this game, and that they're focused entirely on making a PvE experience. If you want that to have longevity, you're probably going to want a bit more variety than eight characters. I'd also say more enemy types would always be good. I mean, you can add a lot of complexity to the game by throwing that in. There is a good amount of boss variety. I think I've seen at least three different bosses, which all had a bunch of different abilities and phases, which were pretty exciting. But the more of these champion units you have that have special abilities, the more interesting you make the game. Because mowing your way through a bunch of creeps which don't really do much is really not that interesting. But fighting these champions that all have these different abilities that you have to dodge or interrupt or block, those are kind of fun. You know, I think actually this game would be even more enjoyable, and this is just sort of a side comment here, this is not a criticism of the game, is if this was actually sort of like a third-person shooter or something like that. It's almost like... I suppose taking the idea of Borderlands and turning it into a wave-based game, which actually sounds incredibly boring when I make it that sound like that. But I think that if you turned this into a genre which wasn't a top-down clicker, sort of that pseudo-RTS, you'd probably have a little bit more fun with it. Because, of course, you'd be manually aiming your attacks. I mean, and of course, you do get to aim skill shots and things like that, but you st it's still an auto-attacking game in many ways. I don't hate it. I, I don't, and I, I don't really like Horde-based games, because I do, I do find Horde mode games to be, for the most part, kind of boring, but I think this one, for what it is, is pretty well executed. I think it's just a little bit thin on the ground for what it is. It's like, it, is there enough to keep people coming back for more and more and more? Because the progression is reliant on this Path of Glory thing, which is really just a set of passives. And you can also unlock a special skin for each character. And that really is about it. That might not be enough to keep people playing. That's my concern with it. And it's impossible to tell. 
because we've seen all sorts of co-op games come out lately, and there are people that have hundreds of hours in Nazi Zombies, which I find to be just befuddling, but it's not my type of game. And there are no doubt people that will put hundreds of hours into this as well. They'll play the top difficulty levels and they'll get really, really good at it. And they'll have a, a bunch of enjoyment there. I think if you've got a group of people that are maybe interested in the concept of a Dota clone, but don't really want to play Dota, and just want to play something more of a, an easier PvE experience, kind of like a comp stomp, that they get to play with their friends, this is not a terrible option. It's not that expensive. It's got a decent amount of character to it. The, the, even though there aren't that many characters to play, I think that their ability sets are quite interesting. Like, for instance, you've got a lot of actives which also have passives on them as well. So, for instance, this dash is used as a dodge, and it also gives a passive movement speed increase. But when you activate the dodge, it also increases your attack speed. So you can make a build entirely based around that. I'm personally making a build which is based around my healing, which also actually gives me a ton of AoE power for clearing out those nasty little creeps. And at rank 5, I can actually clear a minor creep wave using that ability alone, which is kind of enjoyable. Or... I could actually make kind of a tank medicus build with a siphoning dart because that heals me and it's also a good single target ability. So I think there's a bit of experimentation. There's, there's, a, there's certainly range for that sort of thing going on. And, you know, there's, there's a decent amount of items available here, as you can see. Uh, this is all going down the list. There's quite a lot here. And of course, some of them are kind of specific because there's quite a lot of stats that you're looking at here. You're probably not going to want a tanky item on your medicus. That's fairly unlikely. But it's a co-op game, so you have a bit more room to experiment which I quite like. I know a lot of people are uh, maybe not such a huge fan of being stuck into predefined builds and a predefined meta. And I think that while you're going to have some of that at the higher difficulty levels in a PvE game like this, at the lower difficulty levels, you can kind of do what you want. You can sort of fool around and experiment a little bit and just have a little bit of fun with your friends. And for that, it's okay. It's a little bit weird to see a game like this put into a full commercial title because it almost feels like there's just not enough to justify that. That's why when like when Tower Defense started becoming commercial, a lot of people asked, well, why? Like, I can just play Tower Defense for free on Warcraft 3 or whatever, or on Newgrounds or Congregate. There's a bunch of free TDs. Like, is this genre really in-depth enough to justify a commercial release. And then we had games like Defense Grid come out, and then people said, actually, yes, if you do it right, it can be. I don't necessarily think that Bloodsports TV is maybe the greatest example of taking this sort of hero defense mod genre and turning it into something worthwhile. It be Just because, like, it doesn't seem like it really has enough content. But it is also a $10, $10 game. And you really can't ignore that with the price point. If this was, like, a full $60 you'd have probably a lot of the complaints that you see people with Evolve. It's like, well, there's just not enough game here for my money. But at 10 bucks, you might be able to find a bunch of friends that would actually be interested in playing this and get a decent few hours out of it. Personally, I'd maybe wait to see what they do with the patching. It would be nice to see whether or not they intend to add additional content. Hopefully they do. I'm playing a short form version of the game right now, by the way, as you probably noticed. It's like, oh, the game seemed a bit short. Well, you can actually go up to 10 waves, which will have three bosses. So, or you can go for medium, which I think is seven waves. So I like the fact that you can customize the length of it because at four waves, this actually doesn't outstay its welcome. And you kind of you get to level up and play around with some of the abilities and grab some cool items and do some cool stuff. And then the game ends and then you do, a, you do another one and so on and so forth. So being able to customize the length of that and also customize the map because there are a good amount of map choices, is a plus on the side of longevity. I'm not 100% convinced about its commercial viability, but there are a few people playing it. It doesn't have a huge player base right now, but I don't have too much problem finding a game, but I do have problems sort of finding a game that is the type that I'm looking for specifically. Like, I might be forced into a game length that is not what I was looking for, because there just aren't enough games otherwise. So that is unfortunately something that you will have to consider with this game. But... Uh, it's it's not a bad game in and of itself. It's just I think a lot of people are going to turn around and say, well, I don't think there's enough here for my money, and I can play mods that do the same thing as this. And they're not wrong. I think the game's decent enough to stand on its own feet at its price point. I think if it was any more expensive, I'd certainly be doubting that. Or maybe you just might want to wait for it to get even cheaper so you can maybe buy a pack of it and uh, pick it up like that. But I don't think it's awful for what it is. I just think that... Inherently, the genre is really limited, and what I'd like to see is some innovation in it. And I don't think Bloodsports TV really offers that. 
it really is just wave-based defense. There's nothing here that I would look at and say, wow, this is something I haven't seen before. And even, like, old attempts at mimic mimicking Dota. You remember some of the first games that came out, some of the first commercial titles like Demigod? They had some interesting ideas. Uh, you could actually spend money on upgrading your minions and things like that. You don't really have anything like that here. It really is just a case of, hey, you upgrade your character and you win. And that's really about it. And I think there's so there's a lot more you could do with this genre. There's a lot more complexity you could add to it. Optional map objectives, for instance. Again, the ability to upgrade your buildings as opposed to just upgrading your own character. That would be kind of cool. Maybe the ability to micro additional minions. Again, something the Demigod did. There is room for innovation here. Blood Sports TV doesn't really have it. It's solid in its own right, but a lot of people will probably not find it that appealing as a concept. I'll just, we'll just have a quick look at the options menu before we wrap up with the conclusion here. So you've got a couple of nice quality of life and interface options here, like SmartCast, you can turn that on and off. Picture-in-Picture, you can turn that on and off. Picture-in-Picture picture is ultimately pretty much pointless. It does give you a little bit of indication where the enemies are coming from, but that's really about it. So you can turn off all of that. Restrain mouse to window is always nice, and you can customize the health bars, enemy health bars, friendly health bars on and off. Video options... Borderless window, always nice to see. V-Sync on or off, AA and shadow quality and decoration density. It's not a particularly graphically intensive game. I was bothered about the fact that it was locked at 60 FPS because there doesn't seem to be a point of it being locked at 50, 60 FPS, but it is there. And you do have the ability to customize all of your sound sliders, which is always nice, and you can rebind all of your hotkeys like that. There aren't that many hotkeys to worry about, but I know some people don't like the QWER style of something like League of Legends. Conclusion... Not a game that I would continue playing a huge amount of, but I can certainly see the appeal for people that like Horde mode based games. If you happen to be in the market for the short form action RPG, you like the concept of Dota, but you don't like playing Dota, you prefer sort of a PvE environment where people are working together, as opposed to that cutthroat PvP style. If you want a lesser learning curve, if you're looking for something which is fast-paced with short cooldowns, and is reliant mostly on skill shots, and has, quite frankly, a really cool aesthetic. I love the character design in this game, it's got a lot going for it there. Then, Bloodspots TV might be for you. It's fairly cheap and cheerful for what it is. Personally, as someone that plays Dota, I, I accept that I'm not the target market for this, so it's probably not the sort of thing that I would play too much more of. I might get a couple of rounds in with friends every once in a while, but it's not something that I would play forever and ever. And I think that its longevity is perhaps in question, and it will be interesting to see what they do with post-launch support, if any. My name's been Total Biscuit. Take a look at Blood Sports TV, which is available on Steam for $10 or your regional equivalent. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.